What's the ultimate dhikr according to the Quran? The Quran. The Quran. And but when he says dhikrullah, the remembrance of Allah, Allah is not talking about the sounds of the Quran. Allah is talking about the message of the Quran that impacts the heart. So our connection, the more intimate we become in our connection with the Quran, our recitation is going to become more spiritual. فَسْعَوْا إِلَىٰ ذِكْرِ اللَّهِ Actually, also, I did mention salah. إِذَا نُودِيَ لِلصَّلَاةِ So let me come back to this. Uh, I'll show you something about salah first. The word salah, which we translate as prayer, yeah, um, is actually an istila. Istila in Arabic means to warm your hands on a fire. Okay? Or, or to, to borrow a fire from a... Like there's a barbecue fire and you can take your torch and you can light up your fire. لَعَلَّكُمْ تَسْطَلُونَ Musa a.s. used it when his family was freezing in the desert cold and he said, I'm going to go up to that fire and I'm going to see if I can find some directions and hopefully I can get a little bit of the fire so you can get some warmth. لَعَلَّكُمْ تَسْطَلُونَ Same word from Salat. Okay? It's used also for, for people being thrown into the hell, fire of hell. تَصْلِيَةُ to Jahim. تَصْلِيَةُ أَوْ إِنَّهُمْ لَصَالُ النَّارُ صَالُ From the same word. صَلَى يَصْلِي and from it, we get the word prayer. What does prayer have to do with heating and fire? Actually, the idea is when you put something in the fire or when you heat something, it becomes soft. Okay, the heat makes it soft. If it's a stick and you put it in the heat, it starts bending, right? The idea of salah, the spiritual meaning of salah, one of its meanings is that its intensity humbles you. It softens you, like it softens your heart. It softens your thoughts. It softens your feelings. Like those who believe their sins, their skins become soft. Right? So there's a, there's a, there's an, a, a, a detoxing happening. And there's a melting of you happening when you're standing in the prayer. It's incredible. Then Hassan Hassan Jabbar in his dictionary, he argues, this is a little bit technical but really cool, so I'm, sh I'm sharing it with you. The word salah has to do with sad, lam, and ya. Sad, Lam, and Ya. And in Arabic, there are vowels. Alif, Waw, and Ya are vowels. So if you get rid of the vowels, then what consonants are left? Sad and Lam. So there's a, th there's a theory in Arabic linguistics that the, if there's three letters and one of them is a vowel, then you look at the two consonants, in this case, Sad and Lam, and any word that shares those two letters is related to that word. So you take the common denominator, which is Sad and Lam, and from it, and the other vowel would be if you put a wow in the beginning, wasala, which is another word in Arabic, which is similar to sala because it has sad and lam in it. One has a vowel at the end, the other has a vowel in the beginning. It's, it's really, it's like studying algebra. Honestly, it's it's really cool. But anyway, so this word wasal, which is mahmu, which is a mithal, mithal wawi, means to connect. And so salah also means to join, to connect. You know, like وَيَقْطَعُونَ مَا أَمَرَ اللَّهُ بِهِ أَنْ يُصَلَى They cut what Allah has commanded to keep joined. When we're called to salah, we firstly connect to Allah. And by extension, in a very secondary way, we actually also connect to each other. Allah says, وَاَتَصِبُوا بِحَبْلِ اللَّهِ جَمِيعًا Theoretically, hold on to the rope of Allah altogether. وَلَا تَفَرَّقُوا And don't be divided. What's a physical demonstration of everybody holding on to the rope of Allah together and not being divided? Friday prayer. Friday prayer, everybody's together. They're not divided. And they're all holding on to the rope of Allah. Right? So there's this, this idea of connection. So let me come back and uh, just go through some of these other things. Then, وَإِذَا نُودِيَ لِلصَّلَاةِ The call is made, the, the lam actually means for the purpose of. The ultimate purpose is the prayer itself. But we know that Jum'ah is not just the prayer. It's what else? It's the khutbah. It's the khutbah and the prayer. And which, there's five prayers in a day. Which prayer do we not pray on Friday? We don't pray Dhuhr. Dhuhr is four rakahs. But the Friday prayer is what? Two rakahs. Our fuqaha looked at this and said, the reason we don't pray the four rakah of Dhuhr is that two of them become the equal of the khutbah and the other two are the, the prayers that we pray. Which is why the khutbah becomes a part of the prayer. Okay? So we're compensating two rakahs of Dhuhr with actually the khutbah. Okay? Which is why you should take every precaution you can to come to the Friday prayer early. You should also take every precaution you can. It's not just any speech. It's a part of the salah in that sense. So you shouldn't be talking or 
you know, distracted, just like you wouldn't do that in the prayer. You wouldn't in the middle of your prayer be like, Hold on. <laughs> well, let me respond. Hold on. Okay, I'm about to go to Rukul. I gotta go talk later. Allahu Akbar. Wouldn't do that, and you shouldn't do that also in what? In the khutbah. In the khutbah. And even from an early age, our children should be taught khutbah is not a Any other speech, you, you, any other speech is going on, people are talking to each other, no problem. But this, you shouldn't be. Now, I'll share with you my own, again, might sound controversial to you, but I'm going to share my position on this with you. There was a, uh, because this was a, a, assumed that the two rakahs of Dhuhr are now equivalent of the khutbah, which is then making it the khutbah sacred. The khutbah has now become sacred. Now that it's become sacred, it should be in Arabic. So fatwa came that the khutbah itself should be in the Arabic language. Otherwise, it's not really considered a khutbah. Okay. The problem I have with that view is that one, the Prophet ﷺ spoke in Arabic because he was speaking to an Arab audience. It's number one. The opening praises of the Prophet's Masnoon Khutbah or the or the fact that we praise Allah and send salawat on the Prophet ﷺ, sure, do that in Arabic, that's a great sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. But if somebody who's Arab or speaks Arabic starts talking about, you know, how we should help our young men and women become more independent and become financially responsible so they can get married early. But he says all of that in Arabic to a Turkish community. And he says all of that in Arabic to a Bangladeshi community. Did any of them hear anything about the ayat of Allah? They didn't. I mean, that's actually it's what I'm shared, shared with you is inspired by an ayah of the Quran. The Quran talks about these issues. You know? that it talks about financial independence and how you have to become and related to marriage. So this is an important issue that the community needs to hear, but now they can't hear it because it's only being said in Arabic. And the problem with that is, Allah never said the Arabic language is sacred. The sacred words in the Arabic language are sacred. Quran is sacred, not Arabic. When I say, كيف الحال يا حبيبي, that's not more Islamic. I was like, how's it going, bro? That's just as, as equal. You know what? There was a funny story in a country where they don't speak Arabic, but Arabic is supposed to be like really the Islamic language. They have they had a problem in that Muslim country where people, they just go by, a, because there's no public bathrooms, right? So people go by a wall and they just pee. It's just it's disgusting. And they put giant signs, please don't urinate here, please don't pee here, etc. And nobody listens. This is, a, this is a disgusting, right? So somebody came up with a genius idea. They put it in calligraphy Arabic. Do not pee. That the, the problem stopped. <laughs> because in the minds of people, Arabic itself is sacred. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, so I, I, I do believe the, the masnoon part of the khutbah, the, the hamdat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the salawat of the Prophet I think we should preserve that sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. But the message of the khutbah actually should be in the language of the people. And that's why it was separated from the prayer itself. So it's supposed to be a message for the people. So anyway, that's this salati bin yawm al-jumu'ah. Now, min yawm al-jumu'ah, this is the next, next piece. A part of the day of Friday. This is really important because the people that came before us, the Israelites who were given the Torah, they were not told to pray a part of the sacred day. And for them, the sacred day was called Asabt, Asabt, the Sabbath. And actually, they were told to pray the entire day and leave all business the entire day. I'm going to go into detail about that later on, but I'll tell you one thing now. And that is, Allah has taken what used to be part of the Sharia of Musa a.s. and He reduced it and He made it lighter. Now there are other things in the Sharia of Musa salam that Allah made lighter also. Like the things they added on, like for example, I told you they considered the camel uh, impure, right? And Allah clarifies that no, it's not impure, you can eat that in the Quran. There's a there's an ishara in Surah Al Imran. Similarly, they used to have days in which they would fast. Allah made those days optional, but He made the, the fasting of uh, Ramadan mandatory. On this note, you should note a few things about our prayers and theirs. Their prayers, they used to have also ruku and sujood like we have. 
They used to have ruku and sujood. But it seems that they used to have sajda first and ruku second. Okay? Guys, sorry for the interruption in the middle of this lecture. Just before you continue, I want to let you know and encourage you that I want you to sign up for BayinaTV.com and help others sign up or even sponsor students for BayinaTV.com so we can create worldwide communities of students that are studying the meanings and the benefit and the wisdom of the Qur'an uh, and are inshallah ta'ala spreading that in their own circles. Thanks so much. And we, we get that ishara in how Allah spoke to or the angel spoke to Maryam salamun alayha was shudhi warka'i ma'ar raki'in. Do sajda and make ruku'ah. Okay, so they do sajda and they make ruku'ah. But we do ruku'ah first and we do sajda. So Allah changed the format of the prayer. Then they used to pray towards Jerusalem. Allah changed it towards what? The Kaaba. They used to pray in the middle three days of the month. Allah changed and the day of, the day of Ashura. Allah changed the fasting to what? Ramadan. He mandated the fasting in Ramadan. So what is Allah doing? He changed the capital. He changed the national holiday. Right? He changed the sacrifice. He, he kept some things, but He altered each thing. You know what that is? When a nation has a new capital. When a nation has a new constitution, the Qur'an. When a nation has a new... We don't have an Independence Day. We have an Independence Month. And usually a nation has an Independence Day when their constitution gets materialized. The Qur'an got materialized, meaning it came down in the month of Ramadan. So we don't have an Independence Day, we have an Independence Month. Right? And then we celebrate that at the end with Eid, actually. Right? And then they laid claim to Ibrahim alayhi Allah gave us Eid al-Adha. And we make bigger claim to Ibrahim alayhi salam than they can ever make. Because now millions and millions and millions of people go to Hajj and we have an Ibrahim convention every year. Right? That's literally an Ibrahim alayhi salam convention. And we slaughter the animal just like who slaughtered the animal? Ibrahim alayhi salam. So we reclaimed Ibrahim alayhi salam. We reclaimed the legacy of Ibrahim. We reclaimed the prayer. We reclaimed the fasting. We reclaimed the final revelation. All of it's getting reclaimed. And the same way they had the day of Sabbath and Allah said, now the sacred day shall be Jumu'ah. That got reclaimed too. There's a reclaiming happening. Wait, wait, wait. What about Saturday? No. It's actually Friday. It's Friday. So the, and it's not the whole Friday. It's only a part of Friday. Allah said about them, وَيَضَعُ عَنْهُمْ إِسْرَهُمْ وَالْأَغْلَالَ الَّتِي كَانَتْ عَلَيْهِمْ He told us about the people of the book. Allah has given this final Prophet وسلم, He has given him something that removes the burdens and the chains that were on them. They were chained by the Sabbath and Allah has removed that and invited them to something much easier, which is the day of Friday. So He says to us, فَسْعَوْ إِلَىٰ ذِكْرِ اللَّهِ um, Rush, by the way, Jumu'ah, Jumu'ah, the meme has a U sound, right? Banu Uqayl, another, another tribe of the Arabs, used to say Jumu'ah, Jumu'ah, with a sukun, Jumu'ah, like Pakistanis, Jumu'ah. So you're more Banu Uqayl, basically. So you have an ex I won't, I won't have to correct you, say, no, no, you say Jumu'ah. No, you can say Jumu'ah, it's okay. Jumu'ah. Jumu'ah is okay Arabic to say. It's not, it's not wrong to say, okay? Anyway. By the way, before it was called Jumu'ah, it was called Aruba or Uruba, which actually means relaxation. Yeah, so before, its its old name in Arabic was Uruba. Pretty cool name too. But Jumu'ah is better. You, I, you imagine somebody saying, hey, you're going to go Uruba? I was like, no, I'm going to Bahama. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Let's, let's talk a little bit about, by the way, just just FYI. So it was called Uruba. Ayamul usbu' in al-Arab fil-qadim hiya awwal. Sunday was called awwal. Ahwanu jubar. That was Saturday. Uh, that was uh, Monday. Oh, uh, Urag, and then Dubar, and Mu'yis, and then Aruba, and then Shiar. Shiar uh, is actually Saturday for them. This, these were the names of the week in ancient times. Now, of course, we have Al Ahad, Al Ithnayn, Al Thulatha, Al Arbi'a, Al Khamis, and Al Jumu'a, and Al Sabt. But interestingly, Sabt is the same. A Sabt now which in the, the uh, Hebrews say Shabbat, and in English, the Bible calls it Sabbath, which actually comes, the Arabic etymology is Sabata. Sabata means to cut, like, وَجَعَلْنَا نَوْمَكُمْ Subata comes from Sabbath also. He made your sleep a time that cuts you off from this life. Right? Whatever problems you got going on, they're not going on when you're sleeping. Your stress, your anxiety, or this, your, the fight's over, the argument's over, the meeting's over, because you're... You're not there anymore. You're cut off, right? So the word 
uh, Subat, it was used because it cut them off from their business, their earnings, everything. It cut them off completely, right? So Allah says, فَسْعَوْا إِلَىٰ ذِكْرِ اللَّهِ Rush to the remembrance of Allah or rush towards remembering Allah. Now, Allah could have said, when the call is made for the prayer uh, as part of the day of Friday, rush to it. فَسْعَوْا إِلَيْهَا فَسْعَوْا إِلَيْهَا Rush to it. And the it would refer to the prayer. But Allah now gave a new name to the prayer, which is what? The remembrance of Allah. ذِكْرِلَّهِ فَسْعَوْا إِلَىٰ ذِكْرِلَّهِ This is called Al-Mudhar بَعْدَ المضمر. We are في مقام المضمر Meaning, we expected a pronoun, but Allah used a noun. Simple, let me put that in simple words for you. If Allah calls to the prayer, go to it. That makes simple sense, right? If Allah calls to the prayer, go to it. The it, everybody hears it, they know what it is talking about. What's it talking about? The prayer. But Allah says, when Allah calls to the prayer, go to remember Allah. Go to remember Allah. So instead of saying the word prayer or saying the word it, he replaced it with remembering Allah, which is really amazing for a couple of reasons. The most obvious one of them is salah is on the outside, but the remembrance of Allah is on the inside. This is al-kitab with hikmah together. Isn't it? Because salah is kitab and dhikrullah is hikmah and they got, they got fused again. So you don't get to separate them from each other. One is the matter of our actions and the other is the matter of our hearts. We also now learn what is the ultimate goal of the Friday prayer is to truly engage in the remembrance of Allah. So now the concept of remembering Allah, a, little, a, a few comments about that before I give you your break. We're, we're not going to be done with this ayah that quickly because there's lots to discuss here. But I'll just tell, tell you something about the dhikr of Allah. When somebody says I'm doing dhikr nowadays, what do they think of? <laughs> or they have the, the beat situation. And the way they move that beat, I'm impressed with the way they move the beat. It's like machine gun dhikr. Right? <laughs> and now you have like people that have digital, like, <laughs> pretty soon you're going to get the AI to do your dhikr for you. <laughs> Dhikr turned into this weird thing. I mean, honestly, you could do that stuff, fine. But it turned into this other institution that actually started getting further and further away from what Allah was describing as dhikr, the remembrance of Allah. The remembrance of Allah. Allah says, الَّذِينَ يَذْكُرُونَ اللَّهَ قِيَامًا وَقُعُودًا وَعَلَى جُنُوبِهِمْ They remember Allah standing, sitting, and on their sides. The Prophet ﷺ taught us, when you walk into a home, make this dua. When you walk into the bathroom, make this dua. When you start eating, say Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. When you wake up, make this dua. When you go to sleep, make this dua. When you're with your wife, make this dua. When you get in the car, make this dua. When you reach your destination, make this dua. When you hear some good news, make this dua. When there's rain, make this dua. When it's hot outside, make this dua. Oh my God. What is that? What is all of that? That's the dhikr of Allah. Let's remember it. Any opportunity in life it just becomes remembrance of Allah. It's not a generic set of words. Those words have value, of course. Alhamdulillah, subhanallah, astaghfirullah. Those are heartfelt words and we're supposed to do the, the wisdom of those words. That has its own place. But the actual dhikr of Allah was in life situations. It was actually, and it's not supposed to be some kind of a posturing or a kind of a demonstration of your spirituality. Like when somebody walks in that you don't like and you say, Astaghfirullah al Or, La hawla wa la quwata illa bin ya. Or, people sometimes they say, Alhamdulillah. And then other times they say, Alhamdulillah wa ala kulli hal. Meaning, Alhamdulillah, no matter what. <laughs> Even though you're here. <laughs> you know? And those are, that's not dhikr. That's just you trying to slap someone with religious terms. That's not, it's not, that's not, let's not call that dhikr. Dhikr is done from the heart. And dhikr is done, but genuinely you remember Allah. And the ultimate thing, the, the ultimate component of dhikr, what, what does the Quran say about the Quran itself? He says, In huwa illa dhikrun. It is nothing but dhikr. This is a description of what? In the Quran. Inna fi dhalika la dhikra liman kana laku qalb. 
in it, no doubt, there is a powerful dhikr for anyone who has a heart. فَذَكِّرْ بِالْقُرْآنِ مَنْ يَخَافُ وَعِيدٍ Remind with the Qur'an, whoever fears my threats. Remind with the Qur'an. كَلَّا إِنَّهَا تَذْكِرَ فَمَنْ شَاءَ ذَكَرَ No, no, no. It is a very powerful reminder. Whoever wants can remember it. Remember what? The Qur'an. وَالْقُرْآنِ ذِي الذِّكْرِ I swear by the Qur'an that has the power of dhikr. What's the ultimate dhikr according to the Qur'an? The Qur'an. The Qur'an. And, but when he says, Dhikrullah, the remembrance of Allah, Allah is not talking about the sounds of the Qur'an. Allah is talking about the message of the Qur'an that impacts the heart. So our connection, the more intimate we become in our connection with the Qur'an, our recitation is going to become more spiritual. By the way, even if you don't understand Arabic and you listen to recitation, you'll feel something. You'll feel a connection. But the more you start learning the Qur'an, even indirectly, little by little by little, and you listen to the same recitation, it will hit you differently, and then differently again, and then differently again. And I'm guaranteeing you, Arabic is not the key to understanding the Qur'an. Arabic is one of many doors, many locks that have to be unlocked in the heart. It's just one key, but there are many gates. And those gates, the more you spend time with Allah's book, you will recognize those other gates. They, each one of you have different gates inside of them that are locked. I was in a, uh, because I'm going to give you your break, I'll just remind you guys of one of the most amazing experiences in my life. I went with Dr. Suhaib to something called Dawrat al-Quran. Dawrat al-Dabur al-Quran. We went to Oman in Masqat. And we spent a week there. And what Sheikh, uh, you know, Dawood Busnan said to us on the first day was so amazing. The whole program was in Arabic. We spent an entire week living in the masjid. Nobody, uh, like we were the only, I think we were the only two non-Arabs there. Uh, me, and, me and Dr. Suhaib, right? And of course, I'm going to be like super Pakistani, so I wore shalar kameez the whole time because I'm not going to pretend to be Arab. Listen, <laughs> so because I'm not. But so, but anyway, so we're there the whole week, and then first, and, and he said, "Minkum, minkum ulama, wa minkum tujjar, wa minkum, uh, and you know, uh, ahlul amal, umat. Among you are business people. Among you are scholars. Among you are fuqaha. Among you are Islamic court judges. Among you are hadith scholars. I was like." As he said, among you are taxi drivers. I was like, okay. <laughs> we're, we're okay now. But nobody knows who anybody is. Nobody knows. He goes, and he goes, Alhamdulillah, nafhamul Arabiya. We understand Arabic. Nafhamul Quran, عندما نقرأ. No, يقرأ علينا. When, when the Quran is recited on us, we understand it. ولكن, but, there are walls between us, our hearts, and the Quran. And the walls aren't just about knowledge. Because we have the knowledge, but there's still walls. We're going to spend a week trying to break those walls between us, our hearts, and the Qur'an. And he said, we're going to do something called Qira'at Qalb. We're going to recite. There, there's, a, there's a mind reading of the Qur'an. There's a mindful reading of the Qur'an. And there's a heart reading of the Qur'an. We're going to do a heart reading of the Qur'an. A Qalb. Qira'at Qalb. Bil Qur'an. That's what we're going to do. I'm telling you, this was one of the most unreal Qur'an experiences of my life. Of my life. We would sit there and we would recite the same ayat. I've heard those ayat hundreds of times. But we're sitting there and Shaykh Daud Bustan would recite, فَالِقُ isbah, And we would all repeat after him, فَالِقُ isbah, وَجَعَلَ اللَّيْلَ سَكَنَا وَجَعَلَ اللَّيْلَ سَكَنَا we, we, you know, The one who opens the, he, the one who makes the morning tear out from the sky. And the one who made the night calm. And we're sitting in the masjid, we're reciting this, and you look outside, and right after Fajr, the morning light is coming out. And you're looking at that, and you're hearing Allah say, فَالِقُلْ إِسْبَاحِ وَجَعَدَ اللَّيْلَ سَكَنًا And it's like you heard that for the first time. And you're just, uh, you can read the tafsir, you can read the grammar, you can do all that, but now you're not reading from your mind, you're reading from, فَاسْعَوْ إِلَىٰ ذِكْرِ اللَّهِ Come to Allah's remembrance, bring your heart to the Jum'ah prayer. Bring your heart to it. That's its point. Some people complain, oh, the khutbah is always talking about the same thing. We need some new information. Why is it always saying the same thing? What is the, what is the definition of reminder? Is reminder something new? By definition, reminder is something that you forgot. That you need to be told again, and then again, and then again, and then again. So the khutbah needs to be actually 
the dhikr of Allah. So I'm going to give you guys your break at this point in the ayah. Barakallahu li walakum. Assalamu alaikum everyone. There are almost 50,000 students around the world that are interested on top of the students we have in studying the Quran and its meanings and being able to learn that and share that with family and friends. And they need sponsorships, which is not very expensive. So if you can help sponsor students on Bayina TV, please do so and visit our sponsorship page. I appreciate it so much and pray that Allah gives our mission success and we're able to share the meanings of the Quran and the beauty of it the world over.